good to see some back that have been gone and um, uh, on Christmas vacation, and we praise the Lord for that. And um, uh, excuse me. Now you can say your pastor drinks on the job. Uh, I hope you all had a happy new year and uh, Jesus loves you. Didn't the lady that did, didn't or praise team do a wonderful job today? That, that was a great song there. The grace of God is what gets us through. Grace, uh, God's riches at Christ's expense. I've always liked that. Jesus is good. Uh, wish you a happy New Year's and a good morning. And I hope you had a happy New Year's. And I hope your whole year will be a happy New Year's. I want to uh, mention prayer time. Uh, I know that uh, LaDonna already mentioned it. Uh, you know, at 9 o'clock, we join for prayer. And we have some, a few, who come. And we pray. And uh, Jesus has promised to meet with us. We're two or three gathered together in his name. He, he will be there with them. And I believe that. And I, I just, if you have something that's important, pray and come and join us. Uh, I think the power of the church is found in the foundation of prayer. So we need to be a praying church so that we can be a strong church. And um, uh, we just praise the Lord. Uh, last week, I talked about Mary. If you were here, you might remember. And I said, let's go off into the new year with the kind of faith that Mary had. Mary had an unbelievable faith. And I'm not going to go through all that again. Um, uh, if you didn't catch it, it's on the internet. And uh, But I decided, we talked a little bit about New Year's last year, but I decided to talk about New Year's again this year, again this week, new beginnings, and uh, it's a little different it, that my sermon text is Deuteronomy 4.9, and uh, on January 1st brings not only a new year, but for many of us it brings a hope for a new me. How many of you make New Year's resolutions? Anybody? You should. I believe in New Year's resolutions. Uh, for, for many, the trouble is more than more than not, we quickly realize it might be a new year, but it's still the same old me. And if we really want to have change, we have to change. Amen? We have to be the catalyst for change. We put, our, we put a lot of faith in the power of New Year's. Some people put more in it than others, believing it can bring a difference to our lives. And I believe it can bring a difference to our lives, not necessarily New Year's, but I believe in the concept of new beginnings, of second chances, and I believe that's found all throughout the Bible. The sun sets on December 31st, and when it rises the next morning, we're in a new year, and we're living in new times, amen? New possibilities, new hopes, new ideals, new dreams. If we take our New Year's resolution seriously and, and we you know I'm not saying that everybody makes that New Year's resolution well, I'm going to lose 50 pounds this year or I'm going to make a million dollars or you know let's look at our resolutions and make some that will make us better people better for Christ better for our families better for our friends if we take our New Year's resolution seriously it can add up to new beginnings in making New Year's resolution, many try to bring new hope and new power to their dreams. And I don't think that necessarily is a bad ideal. I will tell you that the only true hope of new beginnings, we must realize there has to be change to the power of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen? Uh, I firmly believe that the only really good change comes from the power we find in Jesus Christ. The trouble is more than not, we try to build our New Year's resolutions on the same old us. So in making a New Year's resolutions, we must realize that there may be some things that need to change. Some habits that aren't good habits. Some habits that are really good and we need to keep. Some old habits that must be eliminated. 
from our new years and maybe some new habits that will make us better people. That's where we really want to go. We want to be better people, better Christians for Christ. New Year's is an opportunity to do some thanking and a kind of spiritual inventory in our lives. If you're a businessman, if you've ever ran a business, you know that every year you have to do an inventory. And, and, and you, ha you have to work on your business plan. You know, when you start a business, the bank makes you come up with a plan, and they want you to work that plan. And every year you should try to make that plan better so you can make more money. And every year we should do a spiritual inventory of our lives. I believe the new year is a gift from God. I, I really do. I believe one of the reasons God created us in the world governed by time was so, so he, he could give us new years and new beginnings. Now, time is the most, I don't know how I would say it, it's the strongest bond, the strongest control on your life. Many things you can affect, but you cannot affect time. It keeps right on marching on at the same pace. You can't speed it up, you can't slow it down, and you can't even save one second. I must confess that I like the whole idea of new beginnings and New Year's resolution. I believe it's all made possible by a God of second chances. Last year contained 365 days, 8,760 hours, 525,600 minutes and 31,536,000 seconds. I did a little math to figure that one out. And every one of those seconds are important to us and to God. Moses prayed in Psalms 90, verse 12, teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. That's what God's trying to do, do in our lives. He's trying to Form a heart of wisdom, a heart that lives by his word. Every day we spend 1,440 of those minutes that God gives us. We can save our money. We can save lives. But we can never even save one second of that day. The Bible tells us that God believes in new beginnings. Also, you see the message of new beginnings all through the Bible and the message of salvation. In fact, you can... Find quite a few new things listed in the Bible. In Psalms 33, 3, the psalmist tells us that God gives us a new song. Uh, in Ezekiel, we're told that God is going to create within us a new spirit and a new heart. And he was referring to the Christians. Ezekiel eleven nineteen says, I will give them an undivided heart and put a new spirit in them, and I will move from them their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. Revelation 21.1 says, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. I don't know if, if you all realize this, but if you're, you're a, study, a student of prophecy, you know that one day the Lord is going to start all over. In Revelation 21.5, Jesus says, I'm making all things new again. In Revelation 2.17, we're told that his children will receive a new name known only to them. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, and the old has gone, and the new is here. And we need to work on that new fellow, don't we? Or that new gal. We, we need, to, we, we need to, to try to do everything we can in conjunction with the Holy Spirit to be the best people we can be. On January 1st, 1785, a very wise spiritual man, and some of you might have heard of him, his name was John Wesley, said, whether this be my last year or not, may it be the best year of my life. Amen? We, we, we should really concentrate on every year making it the best year of our lives, not just for us and not just for our families, but for Jesus Christ. I think when John Wesley said that, that's what he had in mind. Like Wesley, we should strive to make the most of our time. What happens to most of us by the end of January is we've broken most of our resolutions. Now, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands, but I think there's already people here today who've broken their New Year's resolutions. I'm going to raise my hand because I've already broken some of mine. <laughs> most of the ones, I guess. Uh, and by the end of February, we've forgotten what those resolutions were. 
It doesn't take long to realize what unrealistic expectations we had, and as well, more than anything else, how undisciplined we can be. Amen? We, we set goals, and before the end of January, we've already broke them. Then we must cope with the feelings of failure and guilt before the year's even a few months old. I mean, we make resolutions. Some people, for some people, it's a big deal. And we quickly, New Year's resolutions can turn into New Year's desolation. We, we just, we go, oh. The month of January gets its name from the Roman god Janus. He's depicted as a two-faced man. One face looks towards the past, and the other looks towards the future. And you really can't get there if you leave. You can't really get to where your goals are. And I think for most of us, our goal is heaven if we live a divided life. Two-faced, two my two double-minded people are not the people that the Bible, that God wants us to be. So if we're to make the most of our of God's gifts, of this new beginning, we must start by doing a spiritual inventory. What's good? What's bad? What do we need to get rid of? What do we need to start doing different? The psalmist said in Psalms 139, 23, David said, search me, O God. King David knew how important it was to do spiritual inventories. Search me, O God. Let me know. King David also said in Psalm 19, verse 12, but who can discern their own errors? If, if, if we're going to do this spiritual inventory, we're going to have to ask Jesus to help us, amen? To reveal to us the areas of our lives that he's displeased with. And to reveal, also to reveal to us the areas of our lives that he wants to enhance, that he wants to make better. Now, I want you to know Jesus is never satisfied with where you are spiritually. He always wants you to improve. The standard is Jesus Christ. Once you meet his standard, then you're there. But I want you to know, including myself, I don't think any of us have gotten there yet. His reference about discerning their own errors was probably not about faults that he kept secret from others, but to faults that he that were secret even to himself. The person most easily deceived is the one we see in the mirror. We want to believe with all of our hearts that we're good people and that we do everything right. And we need Jesus to help us to see ourselves the way we are. The Apostle Paul agreed with Philippians 2.12, he says, Therefore, dear, my dear friends, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. He, he's talking to brothers, people who are saved in Christ. But he says, continue to work out your salvation. Because it's important. we got to keep on keeping on. And then we need to persevere. Jesus said, those who persevere will see the kingdom of heaven. It's not easy, but it's necessary. A new year, the New Year's is a good time for taking spiritual inventory. As we plan our New Year's resolutions, we must look in three areas, three different directions. We must look at yesterday, we must look to tomorrow, and most importantly, we must live for Jesus today. Now let's start with facing yesterday, looking at yesterday. The Israelites were no strangers at looking back. In fact, God told them repeatedly in the Old Testament that they were, and they were constantly challenged to remember God's word and what he had done. He said, remember my words, remember what I've done, honor them and you will live in the land and everything's going to be wonderful. But if you forget, we're going to, we're going to take it all away. And more times than once, God had to take it all away. Moses has encouraged them with these words found in Deuteronomy 4, 9. He says, only be careful for yourselves and watch over your soul's diligence. Maybe that's not so good pronunciation. So that you don't forget the things which your eyes have seen and they do not depart from your heart all the days of your life, but make them known to your sons and your grandsons. 
And that's, all. today we'd say your, your, grand, your children and your grandchildren. But in those days, it was the father's responsibility to teach their children about what they should know about God, and then they would teach their grandchildren, and so the message would keep going. It's important that we know that God tells us that we are to remember his words and what he's done, how he has blessed us. How he has saved us. I mean, when we look back, we shouldn't have to think very far until we look back and we see the cross of Calvary and what Christ did there for us. It's important that when we leave last year and move into tomorrow that we don't forget the lessons that God has taught us. When we leave last year behind and head into the new year, our foundation must be the word of God. Now, I want you to know that there's a lot about last year you can forget. Everything that didn't have to do with God. If God taught you something, remember that. If God blessed you, thank God for it. Everything else you can pretty much leave behind because it's done, it's past. You're not going to change it. We need to remember to give God the glory for all the blessings he has given us. And if need, ask God to forgive us for the things we, sh we shouldn't have done. I think sometimes as Christians, we get to a point where we think, well, I made it. God's forgiven me. I'm on my way to heaven. And if you've asked Jesus into your heart and you've asked him to forgive you, then I believe that's true. But we still must remember that when we sin, it grieves God. And we need to ask him to forgive us. Because we don't want to do that. We don't want to grieve God with our lives. Then when we ask God to bless the new year, we can have confidence that God will bless us. Last year might have been a year you don't particularly want to remember or repeat. Or on the ha other hand, it may have been so good you're now worried that it won't continue. Whatever last year held, spend a little time thanking God for it. What, whether it was good or whether it was bad. If you lost a loved one, thank God that that loved one can be, it can be, has the hope of heaven. And one day you have the hope of being with them again. Lots of people's resolutions have fall from the beginning because they don't look backwards and learn from their yesterdays. What can we be thankful for? What is there to be pleased about? What was hard? What did we learn? What habits do we need to break? What habits are good ones to keep repeating? James 1, 23 and 24 says, the half-brother of Jesus said, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his natural face in the mirror, for once he has looked at himself and gone away, he immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. You know, it, it, it's a bad thing if we know the word and we don't obey it. it, it you'd be better off if you never knew the word and you didn't obey it than if you know the word and you don't obey it. Let's not be like the man in the mirror and forget what kind of people we are. It's important if we don't learn from the past, we're doomed to repeat it. I think history is wonderful. I love, I'm a student of history. I love to look at history. And I love to look and see where God had his hands in the pie. And the one thing I've learned is if you look, you'll always see God was active. He was always, he always had his fingers in the recipe. God doesn't intend us to live in the past. Looking back at his goodness is intended to root us firmly in the rich soil of faith which provides us with the environment in which we can grow with him into the people he wants us to be. That's why I say, when, when you look back at last year, whether it was good or bad, if it's not something that God brought into your life, you can forget about it. It's gone. And especially forget the bad. Don't dwell on the past. Don't let it control your future. The Apostle Paul reminds us, of this in Philippians 3.14, forgetting what lies behind and reaching forward to what lies ahead, I press on towards the goal for the prize 
of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Now, we can have a lot of goals. Healthier, wealthier, friendlier. But let's always have the goal of looking upwards to the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Amen? Let's keep our eyes on the real prize. The one that if we don't make it to heaven, the Bible says everything else was worthless. Now let's look a little bit about facing tomorrow. It's no good going into the new year just looking over our shoulder because if we do, we're going to walk into something, right? You can't walk forward when you're looking behind. We need to focus on where we are going. So I ask you, what are you planning? Where are you going? What, what, where are you intended to go? If you don't know, you need to figure it out. Now, we all want to go to heaven, right? That's why we're here. But there's, you can have other goals in your life. God is interested in the other goals in your life. He wants you to achieve independence, freedom, wealth. He wants you to be healthy. He wants you to be happy. But all those are wrapped up in obeying his word. You, you, you pick any one of them, finances. If you really want to be wealthy, live your, God, live your financial life the way God tells you to do it. Amen? If you really want to be healthy, live, live your life with spiritual wisdom when it comes to health. If you want to be a better person, <laughs> one of the best things you can do is just read the Bible more. Amen? We need to try to focus on where we want to go. What do you want to accomplish this year? And facing the new year, we are hoping to have new possibilities, new opportunities. In making your resolutions, we need to think about who you want to be and where you want to go next. We must have a working plan. The old saying is true, if we aim at nothing, we will hit it every time. If you don't have a plan going forward, you're cheating yourself. You should have a set, you should have a plan set aside. This many minutes reading the Bible a day, this many minutes praying a day, this is when I'm gonna do it. And try to stick to that plan as much as possible. Because nothing will bless your life more than knowing and obeying God's word. Remembering what you have learned from the year gone by and being full of hope for what God can do in the new year, that's faith. The sky is the limit. The only obstacle I believe that can stand in our way is our measure of faith. I really believe that if we're doing what God wants us to do, that he will give us victory. So, so one of the things you have to realize is, are your plans the same as God's plans? Are, are you doing what God wants you to do? Because God doesn't promise he'll give you just anything. I wanted to be the captain of an aircraft carrier. but I never got that. Uh, <laughs> I was a Marine on an aircraft carrier one time. And the one time I talked to the captain didn't go too good. But um, uh, we, need to, we, we need to be on the same page with God. You might want to have better finances. You might want to improve your relationships with one another or with God. You may want to be healthier, fitter, and slimmer. Whatever the plan is, plan in reality. And what I mean by that is make it something achievable. And don't do it tomorrow. Do it today. Start today. If you wait till tomorrow, tomorrow never comes. But if you will do it today, you will be started and on your way. What kind of friend, mother, father, sister, brother, employer, employee, neighbor do you want to be? I'll share with you a prayer that I pray quite often. I, I probably pray this every week. And I pray, Lord Jesus, please make me a better husband, a better father, 
a better fast pastor and a better friend. I think if the Lord will just do that for me, that everything else is going to work out. Because like Paul, I know I haven't arrived yet. Jesus is still working on me. One way to do better at all the things that you want to do to be a better friend, mother, father, sister, brother, employee, employer, neighbor, is to share the gospel with everyone who needs it. Amen? I, I don't know anybody. Well, I can't really, that's probably not true. But most people, especially if they're in need, they don't mind you praying for them. They don't mind you telling them that Jesus loves them. You might have to do a little explaining, but most people don't mind to hear that the God who created everything loves them and wants to bless them. And if you will pray for them, they will think you're a better friend. They will think you're a better neighbor. They will think you're a better brother, sister, father, mother, employee, or employer. And the most important thing is to live for today. Now, in the light of the long year ahead and achieving your goals for the new year, what do we need to do to get there? What do you need to do? Make a plan. Plan. Without a plan, you're not going to get there. And it all starts today. Develop your plan today. Work on your plan today. Live your plan today. It all starts off with living one day at a time, making one decision at a time, taking the next step one step at a time. You know what? Sometimes when we make a plan, we, we look way off at the end of the year, December 31st, and we want to do all this by then. And it seems overwhelming. Well, I can't do all that. But you can do one thing at a time. You can live one day at a time. With God's help, you can take one step at a time. But if you don't have a plan to step out into faith with, you're, not, you're never going to get there, brothers and sisters. It just won't happen. David in Psalms 90 verse 12 says, and I've already said this, teach us the number of days that we might gain a heart of wisdom. But ask God to give you wisdom. Paul said in Ephesians 5, 15 and 16, be careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. I want you to know that, that, that time is not your friend. Eternity is your friend. Jesus is your friend. But time is working against you. And if you don't have a plan, time will turn into an evil obstacle in your path. The psalmist and the apostle Paul were on the same page when it came to time. They said, they said, have a heart of wisdom. Do it God's way is basically what they were saying. They were both saying, live each day by God's word and for his glory, or time will become a stumbling block to your future. So if you, if you aim is to be healthier, start eating healthier today. If you want to get fitter, don't aim to run a marathon tomorrow, that's not going to happen. I, you know, I, I don't know if there's any runners in there, but just from looking, I don't think so. And I know there ain't one right here. I could probably run to the back door and then I maybe have to go to the hospital. Just aim to do some walking today. Make your plan realistic. And then try to build on it every day. Just aim with a little realistic ambition. If you want to improve your finances, don't plan on how you'll spend your millions just yet. If you ain't got the millions, you shouldn't be planning on how you're going to spend the millions. Just aim at paying off one debt at a time and saving a little money. Make your plans realistic. If you want to develop a better relationship with someone, then why not resolve to spend an hour a day or an hour a week with that person doing what they want to do? That will improve your relationship. If you want to grow in your relationship with God, don't resolve to spend 24 hours a day praying. I don't know anyone who does that. If you're praying for five minutes a day, plan to pray for 15 minutes a day and read your Bible. Make a resolution to spend 15 minutes a day in prayer and reading the Bible. My drill instructor 
always used to scream at us when I was in the Marine Corps. We would go on these long runs or these forced marches, and he'd always say, don't look at it as 20 miles. He says, if you do, if you concentrate on 20 miles, you're not going to make it. But he says, if you will just take the next step, one step at a time, you'll make it. You can take that one step. Never look further than the one step you're working on now. And when you take that step, do it to the best of your ability. Make the most of your opportunities. Just keep taking one step. And with God's help, the next step will get easier and easier. Amen? I, I, I believe that. If, if, if you're overweight and you start walking, every pound you lose makes it easier. Amen? If you're poor and you have a whole bucket full of bills, every, one, every time you pay one off, it gets easier, right? With the Lord's help, everything gets easier. And there's nothing that he can't do. All you have to have is the faith that he will help you. We can all make one more decision for God. When we do that, tomorrow gets easier. I'm not saying don't stretch yourself. I'm not saying don't set your goals high. I think you should set your goals pretty high, but not impossible. I want to encourage all of us to set our, set our sights high to work it hard for, for what we want. If something is important to you, work hard to achieve it. Nothing will bring you to the end like hard work and a job well done. But let's also be realistic as well as optimistic. The last thing is important as all the other things. Don't try to do it alone. Share your resolutions with those you are closest to and get them to help you. Now, I want you to know that there might be people here, and I know people, who would say, well, I don't have anybody. And I'll tell you right now, every one of you have one somebody who wants to help you, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. He is on your side. He will help you. Share your plans with him. Ask him to bless your plans. Ask him to bring people in your life who will help you with your plans. Surround yourself with people who will support you, people who will ask you how your goals are coming along and encourage you to keep on keeping on. One of the best things you can do in, in your spiritual life is to have a spiritual accountability partner. I don't know if you all know what that is, but I'll give you a brief description. It's somebody that loves you and would not hurt you and wants what's best for you, and you can tell them anything, and they will help you to overcome whatever that obstacle is. Pastors are encouraged to have another pastor somewhere that they can call and say, hey, look, I'm having a hard time with this. I need you to pray for me because we are not meant to make it on our own. We need people who will pray for us. And if nothing else, we need to be praying and asking Jesus to help us. He will help you. He will bless you. He wants to bless you. Some people think, oh, God's too busy for a little thing like I. God's never too busy. He created the world, the whole universe, in six days. If he can create the universe in six days, I think your problems are not too much for God. I, I just, I really don't think so. There's no problem too big and no problem too small. That's why he never sleeps. Because he's always busy trying to help us. One of the things that we should do, and it's very hard for us sometimes, is we have to admit that we can't do it on our own. I want you to realize that if you're going to make it to heaven, you're not going to get there on your own. You're going to need Jesus' help. You might not need your pastor's help, or you might not need your church's help, even though it will be easier with both of those things, but you will need Jesus' help. You can't get there without his blood. You can't get there without the Holy Spirit 
and the wisdom that the Holy Spirit gives you. You cannot walk spiritually victoriously without the Holy Spirit empowering your life. Does that make sense? Let me hear an amen if you believe that. Amen. I'm telling you, we have a fallen nature. We are sinful on our own. Sooner or later, we're going to turn back to being sinful. But once we give it all to Jesus and we ask him to help us, then the Holy Spirit empowers us to do what we need to do. And if we fail, we ask Jesus. We start over. Lord, forgive me. Because you know I can't do it. See, see, we all think that we're fooling Jesus. Oh, Jesus, <laughs> I can do it. No, Jesus don't think you can do it on your own. That's why in the plan of salvation, he has the Holy Spirit come to live in your heart so that you can make it to the end and persevere and make it to heaven. That's Christ's plan for your life. All the other little things are blessings on the road to heaven. But Christ's plan for your life is for you to get to heaven. And when you get working on his plan, things start going a whole lot smoother, amen? It's the difference between going on a covered wagon and in a, in a jet airplane. When you're working with Jesus, it just sailing is much smoother. One of the things... One of the sayings that I've really become partial to this year, I think I heard it on a TV show, is teamwork makes the dream work. Now, that's pretty easy to understand, amen? As we work together as a church, as a family, we can make our dreams come true. And my dream is to see this church filled up. And today, we have a lot of people gone. But you want to know something? I really believe that God is doing something special here at Trinity. I see people come a little bit at a time. And some of you might say, well, we're growing awful slow, Pastor. Well, I want to tell you something. Most of the churches in the world are not growing slow. They're not growing at all. Most churches are going backwards. Now, I know that because I see the statistics for South Texas and for the whole Nazarene church. And you can just get on the Internet and figure it out. How many people went to church in the 50s? More than today? <laughs> you know it. How many people went to church in the 70s? More than today? <laughs> you know it. <laughs> but I can tell you at our church, we have new people coming all the time. What a wonderful thing that is. What a wonderful thing that on the 17th, we had our children's program. Now, those of you who have been coming here for a while, you can know that there was years and years that we didn't have any children's program. We didn't hardly have any children, amen? But this year, and whether you think it was a good program or a bad program, I, I thought it was pretty good myself. I think LaDonna's doing a, a bang-up job. We had a program. We had children. The stage was full of children reciting the Word of God. Telling the Christmas story. What a wonderful thing that is. Amen. I just, I just love the children. I, I, I got to tell you. That's Jesus. I'll call him back later. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I just love art. You know what? If we don't have children, we don't have a future. We need to invest in our children. Well, Donna comes to me and she told me this a few weeks ago. She says, she says the one thing that you really helped me with, and she, she said other things, but she said the thing I appreciate the most is when I've come to you and I said, we need to do this for the children's department. You said, go ahead and do it. Don't worry about the money. You know what? We have money. What better thing can we spend our money on than our children. If we don't get to take our children to heaven with us, we're not, I don't know, I guess he says he's going to wipe away every tear. I don't know how he's going to do that. But if David ain't in heaven with me, I don't, I'm, I'm going to have to wait and see how God accomplishes that miracle. Amen? Because without, without our children, it's not the same, is it? Amen? 
our children, our grandchildren. And there's, there, there's, there's not a child who has walked into these doors that I knew the name of that I don't have on my prayer list. And I don't care how old they are. So let's, let's work as a team. Let's support one another. The ball of all else, this is the number one most important thing, and I've already touched on it. Ask God to bless your plans and put wings to them. Amen? Commit your ways to God. Tell Him what you want to do. He can do anything. What did the angel say to Mary? All things are possible with God. And he can have Mary to give a virgin birth. I think he can give your plans victory. Isaiah 40, 31 says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not weary, and they shall walk and not faint. I'll tell you what. If you're on the long run, know what it helps you to take the next step like Jesus. Amen? He will absolutely pick you up and carry you over the finish line. So trust in God. Trust in God. Ask him to bless your plans. So I encourage you this year to learn from yesterday. Look back. What has God taught you? What has God done for you? Thank him for it. You know, Take some time and say, you know what, Lord? It may have been 10 years ago, but thank you. It may have been five years ago, but thank you. Just think of all the things that he's done for you. And if you're going to do it, write them down. That way, next time, you don't have to think about it. You just have to read them. But thank God for what he's done. Let God know you haven't forgot. I was watching uh, uh, Larry Kudlow the other day, Fox News. And I'm not saying you need to watch Fox News, but they were interviewing a retired Marine general. But this ain't in my notes. I have to kind of, kind of remember as I go. But they interviewed him about all the stuff happening in the world. And then at the end, he, he told the, the commentator, he said, look, he said, I, I just have to do this. He said, tomorrow is the 50th anniversary of when I was shot and wounded in Vietnam. And he said, I fell down the hill and I was laying in a stream. And he said, there's this Marine. And he told the Marines, he said, and he came down and he got me and he pulled me to safety. And we were both shot again in, in this action. And the Marine that saved him, he died. And he said, I just want to reach out to that Marine's family and tell them thank you. Because if it wasn't for your relative, I wouldn't be here. And I want you to know that gratitude goes a long ways with God. Amen? You, you want God on your side? Then be thankful for what he has done for you. Look at yesterday. Say thank you for yesterday. And in faith, say thank you for tomorrow what God's going to do. And above all else, listen to the Lord Jesus who said, who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? Don't, don't worry about life. Live life. Live it to your best. If you do your best, that's, that's all that's required. God will bless that. If you're living by God's word, and you can't live your best and, li and not live by God's word, but if you're following God's word and you're being thankful for what God has done, he will bless your life. Just keep trusting the Father. Isaiah said in Isaiah 26, 4, and I'm going to close with this. Trust in the Lord forever. For the Lord, the Lord is the rock eternal. We can trust in him. We can trust in our Father in heaven. He is on your side. I, I, I don't care how bad it seems. I don't care how rough the road is. Jesus is on your side. He loves you and he wants to help you. And don't think that because your road is rough that Jesus doesn't love you. He gives all of us rough roads. 
let's just thank God that they're not rough all the time. Amen. I mean, we, it's not every day we're saying goodbye to loved ones. It's not every day we lose our job. It's not every day the doctor tells us this terrible thing. Most of the time, life is going pretty good. Let's trust in the life that God wants to give us and live it to the most that we can be. Let's be like John Wesley. We don't know if this is our last year or not, but let me live for Jesus and make it my best year ever. Amen? Amen? God bless you all. Uh, let's close in prayer. Uh, nine minutes early. You can't beat that. So I saved nine minutes today. <laughs> Dear Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus, we love you today. I pray that for each family here, and you know the problems and the needs and the dreams of each family, Lord. I pray that you would meet them, that you would give victory to their plans, Lord, and that you would carry them through if it's a rough time that they're going through. Help them to feel and realize your love, Lord. I, I know you love them, and I know you're trying, that you're working to help them, but I pray, Lord, that you would help them to feel your love and your help. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all. Have a very Merry New Year's.